Hi, Tadius Magazine. Uh, I love your website. My name is Andrew Lawrence, and uh, I'm your, welcome to my neighborhood. This is Little Ethiopia, Washington, D.C. And um, as you may or may not know me, my father is a famous dancer, Seyum Chacha, Merengue Sasa Boogie. And uh, I grew up in America and uh, had to find my roots. Many uh, children looking for their fathers from back in the day. But here we are, this is my neighborhood in Washington. This is called Little Ethiopia. You all are familiar with it. Uh, Ethiopians in Washington, they came to 18th Street. Everyone knows from Addis everywhere, 18th Street was the famous place in the 70s and 80s. Unfortunately, most of the places, they just rented the uh, buildings and they had uh, their restaurants there, the Red Sea, Fasikas, Meskarum, Addis Ababa, so many famous places in the 80s. But with gentrification, they lost their uh, businesses. Uh, they were brought out because uh, a different neighborhood came and they just sold out. So now they moved further down DC here to 9th Street and thankfully they purchased these places that you're going to, I'm going to show you. Uh, and they renovated these buildings and it was a hard struggle in the beginning there was drugs and prostitution on the street but eventually they were able to build it up and build up a, a community of uh, shops here we have floral shops uh, pastry shops restaurants hair salons uh, we just have the Ethiopian Cultural Center right here this is the Ethiopian Development Cultural Center and uh, it's really not just little Ethiopia, it's little Africa now. And it's a very popular place to come on the weekends now, especially for a date. The men can have their tibs and the women have the vegetable. And uh, it seems like there's a restaurant, you have to go online and get a reservation at these restaurants now. So they're famous names like Shashimani. Um, right here you have a Yetanebi restaurant. Uh, this originally was Harawin, Haraguin. Uh, who is the head ch uh, pastry chef at the Ritz Carlton. And now y Yetanebi, she was a uh, head pastry chef in Italy. And uh, next to this is uh, Queen Makita Ethiopian restaurant. And this is your real grandmama back in the kitchen making some of the best food on the block. Right here, Queen Makita, beautifully renovated. Uh, this is Habesha, Habesha Market and Carryout. This is very famous now because most of the time you don't have carryout. This is the Ethiopian carry-out, buffet style. But people love to just stay here and actually eat here, like a restaurant. They, they don't go to, to go. There's, there's not too many people. The cab drivers like to pull up and take it to go. But it's always popular. People always love to just sit down and stay here at Habesha restaurant. Zula. Zula is famous. You can find all the old guys still hang out here. Uh, some of the older Ethiopian, this used to be where they could come to get the community. Now they're being displaced by the Ferengi, as they say. <laughs> they're, they're taking over the food now. They, they not only eat it, but they become experts. They want to cook it. So now they're coming to the markets and they're asking, please, how do you put the Berbere and the Waze? And, and they're trying to cook it themselves. It's just amazing. This is the spotlight of the whole block here. They have a totally renovated downstairs, totally renovated upstairs. Plenty of uh, space with some of the best food around. Uh, these uh, young men who started a big parking empire, they brought this restaurant for their mother and she's just a fantastic cook and you have to have reservations here every evening. They only open uh, for a number of hours and you can come here, best Ethiopian food around. And as we go down the street, uh, actually the sister of the owners of Etete uh, has this salon revived, wonderful hair salon. Goes all the way back here, have every product there is and a lot of African uh, uh, women come here and uh, Ethiopian women and all the women love the way the Ethiopian women know how to do hair. So this is one of their popular spots to come. Uh, this is Selena restaurant recently opened. Uh, you can come here, have some good food and watch the game. They always have one of the sports games on. People love to come to watch sports over here. And here is the historical Aksum restaurant. This has been here maybe 30 years. Uh, this was the original restaurant they were by themselves. The first Ethiopian restaurant on the block. And uh, they recently renovated also to keep up with the neighborhood and the times. And uh, they have a wonderful upstairs also. We have lots of receptions and programs. Parking. This is the original Ethiopian-owned parking on this side and this side. 
This is where they got their start on U Street parking, famous parking, and they took it from there and developed it. And now they have uh, half a Dulles Airport uh, as their own parking empire. Expo, this is very popular with the young crowd in the evening time, very modern. Looks like New York, Chelsea, or the meatpacking district. This, this is a New York style. You can even see from the front that there's something special inside there. And uh, if you like that New York taste, that's where you want to come to Expo. This is our pride and joy here, of course, a uh, little Ethiopian restaurant. This is the 50 most fascinating restaurants in D.C., uh, the Ethiopian Yellow Page office and many other offices, and they have a gift shop here. You'll see they have gifts, and downstairs, this is traditional Ethiopian uh, decor, little gojos. They make gojos, and you sit in the gojo, and on the weekend, they have the masinko and the traditional washint music. And this is where you come when you want authentic Ethiopian tradition. They have the tej, the guder, and not tella, but <laughs> every other traditional beer that you would want. This is uh, Nubia Faso's place. Uh, Nubia and Kasahun uh, have this uh, floral shop. She used to be uh, at the Sheraton Hotel in Addis. She did floral there, so she opened her own shop. And Asefu, I told you, Asefu Debalke, the singer, she has her place here. She's that late night, uh, not quite after hours, but that kind of crowd that she caters to. Uh, Bole now they have is uh, Nahum Records. Uh, any record, the recent releases from any of the groups you want, you can get right down here. We are very positive for the future of this block and this whole area. And uh, we just want to make sure that we respect the history of the neighborhood, the Howard Theater, the uh, university and uh, the community. And so we're looking forward to working with everyone in the community as a good neighbor and having Taste of Ethiopia fairs and, and bringing that international flavor to Washington, D.C., which it, it so badly needs that cosmopolitan international flavor. So they really enjoy having a place like this in their city. This is the famous U Street in Washington, D.C. This is where all the great uh, black American artists, jazz musicians, Duke Ellington, Rita Franklin, Cab Cal, everyone was here. This was even before Black Broadway, before Harlem. Washington, D.C. was the place. And right around the corner, you have Howard University. And down this block, you have all of the historical landmarks, Ben's Chili Bowl. And, and we continue, the Ethiopia, Little Ethiopia actually continues down this block. You have uh, the famous uh, Majid restaurant. You have Dukem, which is probably the most popular restaurant. Uh, the line is out the door every day. And they have a cultural show on Wednesdays where you can go at dinner time to see the traditional dancing and uh, coffee ceremonies. So they're really popular down here. Uh, you have a club uh, called Almaz. It used to be Roja. And then even before that, there was um, uh, a lot of uh, community involvement. A gentleman named Elias called it the Kaffa House. And he used to have o open mic and uh, Rastafarian days and uh, reggae and uh, spoken word. And so he had the community. He was offering this opportunity for them to express themselves. And it continues to this day. Alma's down there, if you go down there, they have good relation with Howard University and the African American community. They know they always have a place to come and participate. So we've really tried to develop our relationships with the community. There was some controversy back when they were trying to name the street, but that was really more of a misunderstanding and almost a divide that the, that the media was hoping to play on because of the gentrification. They wanted to maybe uh, instigate a uh, fight amongst ourselves, but that didn't make any sense because there was never any legislation to, to put this as Little Ethiopia. It was an idea that people had, but they made everyone get scared that, oh, they're going to change this whole area to Little Ethiopia and forget about the African-American history. And so I've been trying to uh, document all this history, all the restaurants. We're doing research to find who the African-American uh, businesses that were here. We're going to put plaques up and recognize who they were and, and what they did. and. Uh, and just relate the history when Haile Selassie came here uh, to Howard University to get an honorary doctorate. This whole block, U Street, all the way around Georgia Avenue, they had the Kebaro, Magenas hanging from the rooftops. This was the mentality. 
It was all African. They wanted to name every street, Cameroon Street, Sudan Street, Marion Barry, it was Pan-African right here. And so right now, they don't know about all that. And so we're trying to bring that knowledge uh, to the community and come together and, and try to work together to develop DC again.